I really dig the fact that like, you know, I've, I have these sort of personal experiences that mean a lot to me, but, geez, what's, there are a couple things that really stand out. Certainly everything he's ever said to me is memorable. He spoke in uh, just the most memorable, just spoken sort of mantra, you know. And, well, one of the things he said to me one time, we were having dinner, and he said, um, just keep showing up to the party. <laughs> and I just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. And it, it sums everything up for him, doesn't it? You know, just keep showing up to the party. We had a very loyal relationship. Um, he would always take my call, personally, and that scared the crap out of me. So whenever I would call, I would make sure that I had something really to say. And this leads me to how much of a genius he was in that. And I also think it explains a little bit as to why you also get this sort of other uh, narrative about him being tough. So I was standing backstage with him at Macworld one time. And I was a big Mac fan. I actually met him because I cold called him in like 2002 and said, hey, I love Apple. I want to be an Apple guy. And I was so nervous. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. I just went, he said, I got a really good bullshit detector. Don't worry. And we were friends. And it, the first offer for me to do a Macworld came in so soon after that. We were standing backstage at Macworld. And I said, OK, Steve, what about a vintage computer with vintage aesthetics like an old G3 Pismo power book from 1999, which I loved. It's still the best looking power book, right? It looks like Batman's power book. <laughs> I said, I was very excited too, right? I said, what about an old G3 Pismo power book with all new guts inside of it? Why can't you make that? And he just said like this, because we'd sell 14 of them. <laughs> and I went, wow, okay. Now imagine that you had been working on that question for a year and a half. <laughs> imagine that you had drawings, line drawings, <laughs> AutoCAD. You had like 3D printed models of things. And you said, tomorrow's the big meeting with Steve. Here we go, ba ba ba. He'd still say to you, we're only going to sell 14 of these. And you realize how emotional it can be to present an idea to somebody. That's not the only dumb idea I presented to Steve over the years. And he would, he wasn't, that, okay, now that time was sort of purposefully sort of just ribbing me, right? But the other times I called up and I had a genuine idea, he would, he, he wouldn't shoot the idea down necessarily, but he would ask one question that would just shoot the idea down <laughs> from the very center, from the very center of your idea, the one you actually thought to yourself, this is what's going to make me pick up a phone and call Steve Jobs and say, I have this idea. And he said, why can't they do that at home? I said, that, yeah. And then he said, where are you going off to next? I said, Japan. He goes, oh, I know some great sushi places, you know? <laughs> and so it, 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 I, I never knew him from the sort of corporate world. I never knew him. And I can only imagine what it must have been like to have an idea that you want to please. And to move away from the Steve thing a little bit, I think we live in a, a climate now where you're not allowed to yell. You're not allowed to, you can't hurt somebody's feelings anymore when you're creating together. But you have to. You have to be a unit where you hurt each other's feelings sometimes, but you're not trying to. And you go in, you try and fix something. And I think I've seen it in the music industry too. Now, uh, my feelings were hurt when I was told that Continuum didn't have any hits on it. And I went in the studio and I tried to write two or three more songs. So I put that effort in. I, I literally cried on the way home when I found out that the boss didn't think I had any hits because I knew how hard I worked. And when I was done, cr literally cried. When I was done, I went, let's keep going to work. And he wasn't wrong to say he didn't hear any hits on it. He's just doing his job. He's just trying to be better. And when a company's trying to be better together, the guy, the guy on top or the girl on top is going to, because you're being the same organism, send a brain signal to you that goes, hey, no, don't do that. Don't do that. It's, that doesn't work. 
And if somebody's going to go home and then say, I hate that guy, I can't work with him, he hurts my feelings, he's a terrible person, he's mean, then the whole thing breaks down. And the reason the whole thing breaks down is because you can vote that guy out. And once that guy's gone, you have the semblance of an organization, but you don't because there's nobody there for everybody to yell at and be mad at and go to drinks afterwards and say, isn't he a prick? <laughs> yeah, he's a prick. But that guy also shows up and buys you dinner when everyone's a success because of the way you went up and down. And I see it happen all the time now where people got the power they asked for and they don't know what to do with it because there are very few leaders. And if you want to work in a place where everybody's really nice all the time, that's, that's great, but you're never going to celebrate anything, you know? <coughs> and so that's why you see artists who are super huge and they don't have hit songs. They put songs out and you go, this isn't any good because the artist got the control that they fought for. They kicked the old guys out. Mm -hmm. So now they say, what would you like to put out? And I'll guarantee you this, if you ask me enough times what I'd like to put out, I'm putting out junk from time to time because I don't have perspective. And so it's really important that I've, I feel like that the old guys are at the top, the old women are at the top, the people who've seen a hundred of you. You gotta see a hundred of the same snowflake to be able to really know what to do, you know? And so I always respected people who could just push. I'm just pushing, I'm not, I'm not, I'm pushing you because we're working together and you're gonna push me back and I'm gonna push you to try to get you to be better. And there was a breakdown somewhere in sort of like the participation trophy culture where everybody's a winner, where, and it really broke down when people said, he's not gonna talk to me like that. <laughs> okay, he's fired, he's out. Board of directors, he's out. Now you lead the meeting. That's hard, you know, it's hard when you're 35 years old and you're managing a 21 year old. That's, th there's no seniority there in that, in that structure, you know? And so I miss, I miss Steve and I miss bosses. I miss bosses in general, you know? I, I miss editors, I miss people to tell me, don't do that, because there's really every man for himself now. And we wanted it, and we got it, and I don't think it's that great <laughs> for artists to have a manager whose job is to filter all of the ideas and then meet them out accordingly with patience and grace. And now the artist has millions of audience at four o'clock in the morning after going out clubbing and reaching for a phone and doing this and extolling all these ridiculous things. And the whole hierarchy has flipped and the, really what suffered is quality because everybody got their way and it's like, you have to not be able to get your way. Cry a little bit, take a bump and then let it send you back to the lab. Even if you have to say, I'll show him all going to be better for it, you know what I mean? So, but that's not really a Steve answer towards the end, so just saying. It did, did, did remind me though about people who kept pushing and, 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 and uh, care a little bit more about the end result as a team than the meeting itself. And I couldn't even imagine what it'd be like if you worked, if you worked there and you took that much pride and you went, here's my big day, and it'd be like, uh, why not X, Y, Z? Exactly. Why not X, Y, Z? On that incredibly profound note, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for coming today, John. Thank you very much.